Hello and welcome back to Data Test Tutorials. I'm Carl and this video is about camera calibration. It is one of two videos and in this video I will explain you the general idea of camera calibration and we will do some background image cam calibration. We will work on, let's have a look, ah, how to focus right and how to measure the, uh, the noise level function. So first, what do I mean when I speak about camera calibration? Well, it is everything you need to do in order to get good pictures. In this case, this is only relevant for electroluminescent images and photoluminescent images, and it focuses on photovoltaic measurements. So, of course, we want to start with a focused image, so data artist embeds a few functions to focus the image right. Then there is something about how to remove single time effects from images, how to remove background current, so the background image, the offset of our image. Then there are some features to remove the flat field or vignetting effect. What this is I will show you later. Then there is something built in to remove other nasty imaging artifacts, to remove lens blur, uh, sorry, lens distortion here, and to remove uh, lens blur, so increase the sharpness, and finally to remove perspective, so zoom the object that you are photographing into the current focus and unscrew all angles. Let's start directly maybe with, um, well, how to focus an image right. We mark our images or just the full folder. In this case we maybe say we don't want to load the full images because we don't need to load so much into RAM. Just say again, crop our images from, I don't know, 1000 to, why not 1000 to 2000? 1000 to 2000 and update. Here we have all the images. Again, you see, this goes from pretty blurry to somehow sharp to pretty blurry again. One of the current problems I saw in many labs was, well, people don't know where the best focus is, and it is quite hard to define the best focus if you define it by hand. So, is the best focus here? Is it more here? Is it more here? Is it somewhere in between? Well, I don't know. Let's measure it. For this, we want to have the toolbar calibration or calibrate. The first tool in here is the focus measure tool or the tool called relative sharpness. We have different uh, focus measure methods. I strongly would recommend you to use the tenant guard method, okay, because it just works pretty good. Let's activate it. And this was almost too easy. You see where the maximum is. This is the point which is sharpest in this case. It's this image and not the image before and not the image after it. I mean, this is a clear example, but sometimes it's not as straightforward as it is here. This tool can be also used for live sharpness determination. So maybe, let's clear this completely out, and let's create just a temporary folder. We have a temporary folder, okay, and our camera saves every, I don't know, 10 seconds a new image in this folder. Every time when there's a new image, we want to load this image into data disk and we want to determine the current focus level in order to see where our best focus is. So let's start our first image. Of course we have to load it. There it is. And now let's define our input procedure. Preferences, import. We want to load our images and we want to load it in our current import display. And we don't want to show this input dialog because we don't want to click every time the same button. Okay, now let's automate the focus measurement process. For this, we collect the relative sharpness button. We tell him, okay, we don't want to execute you on all layers, but just the last news layer that we include. And we want to activate you every time when there is new data. Let's run it the first time. Okay, this is just one value, there's not much to see. So, 
what changes if we import new images? Focus and just drag and drop the new image. Ah, okay, so the sharpness went up. The image went a bit sharp. But so we don't really want to drag and drop every time the images, so we would like to tell data test these data tests just watch this one fold and every time when there's a new file, just import it. This is very easy in data test. We just go to File, Preferences, Communication, Watch Folder. Here we choose our current folder, which could be for example the folder 10. Okay. Let's set up. We only care about new files and no new folders in every second. I think this is enough. We want to check whether there's a new file. That's all we need to do. Okay, let's make this a bit smaller. So every time you'll get a new file into this temp folder, data test is updated. Continue. And a new volume. And a new volume. And so on. So with this you can very easily change the focus of the camera and see directly where the focus is at optimum. The next problem I would like to remove this current workspace. For this I use the keyboard combination control and Q, Q or workspaces close current. I would like to show you how I define the noise level function. What is the noise level function? The noise level function is basically the noise level dependent on the image intensity. Interestingly, the noise of your image is not constant value. The standard deviation of your average value is not constant. It actually increases with the image intensity itself. And this is basically and predominantly due to shot noise effects. And I can show it to you. So for this, let's load a few random electroluminescence images. Actually here, we have every time a set of two images which are basically the same. We go to the button noise level function, and then we say reference image is every second. Why do we do this? Well, this has something to do with how noise is extracted from images. If we don't have a set of two images which basically show the same, we extract noise through the difference of a median filtered image to a non-median filtered image. This is just an approximation to extract noise and not very precise. It is more precise to say, okay, we photograph the same thing twice and whatever changes between these two images, this is our noise. So this is what we do here. Every second image. At the end, we would like to plot the noise level function. And in order to make this parameter and execution a bit faster, let's say we actually only care about, well, an intensity range from 6000 to 25000. If you don't set this, data to find out about the relevant intensity range. It just takes you a bit longer. So 6000 to 25000. Okay, that's it. Let's activate the noise level function. It takes a few seconds and it will be faster soon, but as soon as this process is done, we should be able to see the current progress. Here we go. Ah, we have our noise level function. So let's look at these weird plots. Because the images that are used in order to fit the noise level function are not very, very nice, I have to say. The noise level function, which is this green fit, is not very well for these images. But as more images as we use, as better as as clearer gets the noise level function. What you see here are the, basically the noise levels for each individual image pair. We have three image pairs, that's why six images in absolute. Then an average value and the fit value. In this display, you see the pixel density, so how many pixels were there at a given value. So knowing now the noise level function of our image is a nice thing because 
this is one of the calibration parameters that we need, for example, when it comes to uh, single time effect removal. So let's go back to our original display, the display where we executed the button, and let's say, hey, I would like to upgrade the current calibration. Now we see a new window popped up here at the global button called calibration file. It tells us, hey, I can't update the calibration if there's no calibration set. So let's create a new camera. Let's call it my camera. And we have a 16 bit camera. That's all. And now let's update noise. This is the current date. And this is just for fun. Let's click on this button. It's my camera. We don't have autosave on. If we set autosave on, then this camera calibration will be saved to your hard drive every time when one of these things is so the dark current calibration, the noise calibration and so on changes. Here we see our noise parameter and info, the calibration date, at the moment there's only one calibration. And if we right click on it, info, we can even see the values of our noise level function. These are three parameters which are basically an offset value and then two parameters for a logarithmic function. This is the current way I use to fit the noise level function. Okay. The last part of this video is about how to get a background image that fits all of our different exposure times. Going back to the original problem, we are here speaking about electroluminescence imaging of PV devices, so PV cells and PV modules. People normally tend to make at least one EL image, one electroluminescence image, which could look like one of these images, and for ex every image that they take, they take one extra background image. Background images are actually pretty boring to look at in my current setup. As you see, it is complete dark setup. There are a lot of white spots. These spots are hot pixels, which are basically small folds in our CCD sensor. And then are these other funny issues, which are single time effects. But otherwise, excluding these, there's not much happening in my background. Why is not there not much happening? Because I use a dark chamber, which uh, removes all environmental light from my system. When I remove all my environmental light from my system, Every time the light conditions are basically the same and there is no real need to make an extra background image every time because the background is basically the same. The only time I would like or the only thing I would like to fit, I would like to fit this background image to a background image of another exposure time. To show you that background images of different exposure times are indeed different, let's load another image. This is an image taken at 10 seconds. As you see, all these hot pixel issues and other issues will be less dominant for short exposure times. So what do we do with this? In order to make a background calibration, we just load all of our background images that we have. And for this it is important that we have a good variety of exposure times. So we want to have small exposure times, we also want to have long exposure times. Uh, if you do a background calibration, just think about which exposure times you normally have for EL imaging, which could be maybe about 10 seconds, but maybe also 2 minutes or 10 minutes, depending on your setup. For each background image, you want to have at least two images of the same exposure time. This is very important in order to remove these single time effects. One of those things I already showed you. So let's load our background images into Data Test. You have it. So we have 12 images. Oh, these are no background images. Let's get rid of those. Remove and remove. And now we have nice clean background image layer set. Um, the tool we need to use in order to do a background calibration is the dark current button. There are two different methods in order to get a background image. I would like to recommend you to use the as function method. The as function method needs all of our background images. 
take at least 16 images. So eight different exposure times by two images for each exposure time to have a decent background calibration. So this button tells us the exposure times for all the different images are taken from the layer value. So what does this mean? This is our layer value. And normally it's scaled from zero to the number of layers that we have. But in this case, we actually want to give this value to the value of our exposure times. So how do we do this? We go to the axis stack. So in data disk, everything is in dimensions, okay? X is in X dimension, Y is in Y, and the intensity is, for example, in Z. Or in this case, it doesn't have any name. I could tell it, in, call it intensity, intensity or whatever. The axis that brings all of our layers together is, however, the stack axis. Could be N, okay? But maybe we want to name it exposure time to make it a bit more clear, okay? And the exposure time, of course, doesn't go from 0 to 9. No, the exposure time actually goes from 600 to 600 to 120 to 120 seconds and so on. So what we can do in order to set this value to our layer value is go to individual and then just name it. If we don't have so many different layers, it is actually quite fastly done. If we have many more layers, we don't want to do all this stuff by hand. We want to extract this information automatically. And indeed we can. We just go back to our stack axis, range, and we go from individual to from name. So this field is a field which is interpreted within Python. Okay, so what we do here is classical Python syntax. In this case, we want to have the number which comes after E till these two uh, dashes. Okay, so we say we start with position number six to the position, and actually, we don't know, it's not a fixed position which we have, but it is clear it is before these two signs come. Okay, so before name dot index bracket and these two signs. Close the bracket, and that's it. This is all the command that we need to execute, and pressing enter brings us all the nice exposure times that we need for this dark current calibration button. The only thing left to do is clicking activate. This might take a few seconds, and it will return us two different displays. One display um, includes the offset of our background, the average offset value, which is time independent, and the other one gives, gives, uh, gives us the ascent, so what changes over time. And you will see that this second image will be basically dark, it ha only has all of our hot pixels, because the nice thing about hot pixels is that they increase basically linear over time. Let's wait a few more seconds. And here we have it. Okay, so this is our output. Two images, image 0 and image 1. Image 0 is the intercept, so the offset. Image 1 is the slope or ascent. Let's go to image 0 raw, and as we see, it's of course not much. And there are already a few bright ones, so a few of these pixels actually start with a higher value. What we also can see are typical sensor defaults, or sensor faults. Basically this is an averaged background image. In the second image we see what changes over time. I guess we need to rescale from 0 to, I guess, 20 or so. And then we see... Ah. Come on. Uh, and here we have our hot pixels. So now we can directly see about how many counters every hot pixel actually changes per second. Let's check this out. So this, for example, this hot pixel changes 4 pixels every second. This one, even 19. So this is a more severe hot pixel. This one, just 3, and so on. With just having these two maps, intercept and slope map, and having a linear equation, which is the background image for certain exposure time is intercept plus exposure time mu uh, multiplied by slope. So with this easy equation we can calculate the background image. Good to know. So let's go back to our display 
our origin display and say, okay, let's update our calibration. We have the calibration date again and an info. There you can give an info of this calibration, for example, not many images, not good. And if you go to your calibration file, you see the current, here we have another calibration. This is part one of the camera calibration tutorial. In part two, we'll go through all these other buttons, which is magnetic or flat field, the actual measurement of the point spread function, so the blurriness of our image, then another setup parameter of the blurriness, and the removal of lens distortion. Stay tuned.